Hey, welcome. This is episode four on my game five journey to find the next big game. I'm Eric, and once again, this is the channel where I do the research so you don't have to. Today, we're going to talk about this ambitious early stage MMORPG project called uh, Krizivia. At least I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, it's on the Binance Smart Chain platform. Uh, as it's still pretty early, there isn't too many uh, token or game specifics yet. But, you know, since the token itself is already out on PancakeSwap, um, we can still look at the game, team, and tokenomics and just see if the token looks promising. Um, plus, I'm going to show you how to get early, how to try to get early access into the game and get some free in game NFTs. Uh, everything's time stamped below. And likewise, it's not financial advice, it's purely for entertainment purposes. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's talk about the uh, early access and NFT rewards first. Um, this is their Medium post back in early December. So in order to qualify for this, you need to stake at least 15,000 KXA tokens, which at today's market price of around 13 cents, uh, that equates to about 2,000 US dollars just to have a chance to qualify. Um, so what they say is the more you decide to stake, the better your odds of being selected and winning. And they're only allowing, they're only going to give those NFTs out to uh, the top thousand participants. So that means it sounds like, yeah, the $2,000 entry is, is just a minimum. You're not guaranteed. Um, and the NFTs, I you know, I'm not exactly sure how this helps you in game, but there's different rarities. So, uh, and they're just these firework NFTs that you can let off in game. The encouraging news though, is that you can actually click on their link and check to see how many people have participated so far. And if you scroll down total number of users staking KXA 101. So that's very far below that $1,000 or, or the 1,000 user uh, cap. Um, so at this point, I think you have a good chance of getting the NFT and participating in the uh, early access with just that $2,000 uh, buy-in. Whether you think it's worth it or not, that's another question. Okay, now let's look at the actual game. Um, I'm going to their homepage and first impressions are whoa this this game the website looks beautiful um you know even just scrolling down just feels and looks really good um, they have their so yeah as i mentioned it's an mmorpg game with nfts of course they have their trailer let's take a look at that really quick You know, the graphics are kind of cartoony, but wow, like they are super vibrant. And this world or this city looks really immersive. <clears throat> so right now the game, the early stages of the game is just going to be this city with like the training grounds and like shops and everything. Um, and this dungeon that you can get to, which is right here, to to loot and get treasures. So you can see the battle system is very similar to like you know all, all the MMORPGs. Like But yeah, it, it looks good. It looks more than good. It looks beautiful. But yeah, just looking at the website and YouTube channel, like you could tell they've placed a big emphasis on the visuals of the game, which is great because, you know, unlike the other games we've been looking at, this is uh, a game that's way more ambitious and on a much bigger scale than the others. Um, let's take a look at the token info first. Currently, as of December 9, the token is 13 cents. And with 250 million max supply, that gives you a fully diluted market cap of around $32.5 million, which, you know, 
considering how ambitious this game is like that that's priced pretty much just like that other mobile game we were looking at last week um and i think you know this is a high risk high reward type of game because it's very like i mentioned it's very early and there is just so much more that this game needs to develop in order to really see if it's going to catch on or not um, but it so it has a really high reward but it also comes with a high risk just because there's so many things that can go wrong um, with this huge scale game still okay let's take a look at the kxa token distribution which has already happened um, they have it on their light paper here and i've kind of tabulated it already so 32 percent of these tokens are for the team and investors private investors only 23 and a half are for the players we'll take a look more at that later and the ecosystem is actually pretty high at 44 and a half percent if you look in the ecosystem you'll see that 21 and a half percent of the tokens are actually saved for reserved reserves so i guess you know that kind of gives them more flexibility to adapt and adjust depending on the how the market reacts to their token or their current needs at the moment so i kind of like having i like the fact how they have that flexibility okay going to the release schedule of those team and investor tokens um if you go to the, their documentation site, they tell you the private sale round is, which again is 20%. <clears throat> After the token generating event, 10% is unlocked immediately. And then it's linearly unlocked over a year. So, <coughs> excuse me, there's no lockup period at all. And if you go to the public sale, and the listing on, uh, oh, if you go to the public sale, same thing, 25% were locked immediately. And then linearly over three months, they're going to get released. Um, Pancake Swap, 100% is actually locked for a year. Um, but then I guess it's all released at once. So the private sale round which is 20% of the tokens, and that's probably the biggest allocation. <clears throat> um, that's going to be, that's already being released currently, and it's going to end in a year. So that selling pressure is already happening. Um, same, you know, the public sale was also 20%. Um, and that's, you know, within a year, well, then linear on three months. So within Pretty much after four months are up, most of those public sale and uh, private sale tokens have have been released already. Um, so you know, normally you'd, you'd like to see a little bit of a longer lockup period, um, but hey, you know what? If the token price goes down early on, that just gives us a chance to get in um, once all these people have sold and lowered the price. Okay, so we've talked about the KXA token. Um, they have another token in this ecosystem called the KXS token. And the difference is, so the KXA token, they, it's kind of the gate, they call it the gateway to get into the game. So you use it for on-chain payments and special packs, such as starter packs, special NFT sell events, or exchanging for the in-game currency KXS. So, Pretty much everything in the game, once you're in, is going to be using the KXS token. So what's up with the KXS token? Um, going back to their light paper, it's the online currency to play, buy, trade, and have new online stuffs in the Crisivia world. So as it carries more risk and economic moves, it needs to have a huge supply so that every player can have some to play with. So they're capping it at 5 billion tokens <clears throat> compared to the 25 or 250 million of KXA. Um, and they tell you that the KXS token is mintable. So, you know, like, like I just said, they can, you can sell your KXA for KSS at some kind of rate. I, I, they don't 
specify if you can go back. But they do say, <coughs> excuse me, that the, it, the KXS token can be traded on other exchanges on centralized and decentralized exchanges. So eventually that will happen. Um, they also mention it's a deflationary token because all the KXS token that gets used uh, will partially get burned. <clears throat> so yeah, that, that keeps the supply down, although they are trying to make the price very low. Of They are trying to keep the KXS token price low so that there's a low barrier to entry. Um, and yeah, they mentioned the in-game token will have base liquidity on decentralized protocols backed by the KXA token <clears throat> to assure the buying ability and sellability of the in-game token. But the main way to get KXS will still be um, by playing and winning rewards as part of their play to earn. So really when you're earning everything, you're going to be earning that KXS token, not the KXA token. The KXA token is kind of just backing that KXS value. Um, so it's, it's pretty ambiguous and it's hard to figure out how that all works, but they do say that, um, I mean, for what it's worth in terms of investment in the project, it's better to go for KXA. But if you are a player and want in-game activities, you will have to use and go through the KXS token. So yeah, there's still a lot of uncertainty in this, um, <clears throat> but that's how that token's set up. Okay, let's look at some of the uh, reasons why people in-game are gonna be buying the token um, so the character to start out is free. It doesn't cost any money to create one <clears throat> unless you're buying one that people are selling. And how those characters gain value is you pretty much need to collect the, the token and turn them into better weapons, better armor, better spells. So there's always that constant loop of mining and upgrading your weapons so you can get better ones. Um, yeah, and same with the web along with the weapons. There's also spells, which I talked about. So that's another thing that you're going to want to be upgrading, or you're going to be hunting for those rare NFT spells so that you can either equip on your player or just sell separately. Um, the last like kind of supply and demand thing to note is that the KXS token is actually going to be uh, deflationary because you will need to burn it for certain things like for special rewards or if you want to link your items to gems um, or even just uh, what is, if you want to buy consumables such as potions, you'll need to burn KXS tokens to the city. So that'll help keep that token price from dropping too much, hopefully. But, you know, again, they don't really talk about, well, they say burn, but then they also mention how, you know, their backend server will have total control over the supply. So if there's a need to mint new KXS tokens, it will be done automatically. So it's it's not 100% clear as to whether it's going to be lost in circulation forever or they can just print more. All right, um, let's kind of quickly look at the team. I, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of, there seems to be a lot of people working on the game, which in a lot of different teams, which is good because, you know, it's an MMORPG, which is a huge, a huge task. Um, they all seem to have decent amounts of experience doing what they do. Uh, you know, the one thing I did notice was that there wasn't a like position for like a lore or story creator, um, you know, especially with MMORPGs, you know, the story is a huge part of the, of what keeps you going and playing. Um, otherwise you're just kind of doing these fetch quests all day, but you know, right now, as I had mentioned, this game is only going to be the city and a dungeon. So, Maybe they're just spending more time focusing on getting that first 
proof of concept up before they really get into the huge uh, potential universe that this game could be in. All right, let's look at their partners on their website. Um, let's kind of take a look at the top five or so. And first you got Unicrypt, which is protocols and services. So it seems like, let's see, what do they do? Vest liquidity lockers, token vesting, token minting, decentralized launch pad. So they kind of do everything. Farm as a service, staking as a service. So I don't know in what aspect they're helping the team with, but yeah, they, they provide a lot of the technical support. It looks like, um, for projects. Um, the next one was Graphlink, and these guys are kind of the same thing. It seems like automated form of, perform over hundreds of actions based on events triggered on chain and off chain. So seems like they're helping with like the smart contracts. <clears throat> Oops. Where am I? Okay. Next on that list is bull perks, which is the ultimate and most fair platform for retail buyers to get access to private sale allocations. So this is kind of a fundraising um, partner. <clears throat> and if you scroll further down, oh yeah, sorry, I missed these two, which is Bakery Swap, swap which is <clears throat> one of those, um, pretty much a exchange. Um, and MXC Global, which is another uh, relatively big exchange. So it's good to see that uh, exposure. Um, and specifically with Bakery Swap, I was looking at one of their posts, their medium posts, and they mentioned how by the end of December, they're going to have starter packs accessible in the alpha and in the later stages. Oh, and in the later stages. Uh, they're going to have loot boxes for sale directly on Bakery Swap um, NFT platform, which are going to contain various items with different levels of rarity. Um, so, yeah, it seems like there will be some exclusive um, releases on Pancake Swap, or sorry, Bakery Swap, not Pancake Swap. Um, and if you just kind of scroll down beyond their you know, top five or so listed partners, you see a few familiar names from some of my other episodes like engine starter. I know I've seen pools. Um, I don't know if I looked at starter capital, but that's another one I'll have to start paying attention to as well. Um, but yeah, it looks like their main investors are either exchanges or kind of tech technical support or help with like smart contracts. And lastly, their social channels, they got all the main ones. Um, their biggest subscribers are in Discord with around 13,600. It's very active in that channel. Um, of course, you got Twitter with 12,000 followers. Um, Telegram. Telegram is about has 8,000 with 1,600 when online when I checked. They, they're also very responsive, and there's a lot of good communication in Telegram as well, unlike a lot of the other games I've looked at where there might be 10 times the amount of telegram followers, but it's just people saying hi or when moon, but there's actual conversation in telegram. So it seems like, uh, both discord and, uh, telegram are great forms to reach out, discuss the project. <clears throat> okay. Let's, uh, kind of recap, uh, what I think. So pros, this game looks freaking beautiful and super immersive. Um, even just from those few demos of like that city in the dungeon, it looks head and shoulders above all other Binance smart chain platform games. Um, it feels like there's a really strong community. Just, you know, going through Discord and Twitter or and Telegram, you can, people are asking a lot of questions. So it seems like there's a lot of interest and a lot of people with the knowledge to answer these questions. Um, and also, you know, it's really early on in the project and the token price reflects that. So there's potential for this token to appreciate a lot, assuming 
the team can fulfill all their promises. Uh, some cons, well, just like the pro, it's very early on in the project. So there's not much info and a lot can go wrong before that public beta, which is supposed to happen um, around the second quarter of 2022. There's also regarding the token distribution, there wasn't really much of a lockup for the private and public sale, um, which you know means just a lot of the tokens already are being put on the market um, to be sold. So that in the short term, that might affect uh, the token price in a downward manner. <clears throat> and I guess the other thing is, like I mentioned, like there's no, there doesn't seem to be anyone, anyone on the team that's designing the lore and background and story of this universe. So, you know, in the short term for the alpha release, all there is is the city and dungeon and there's not really a story. <clears throat> but you know, if there's not anyone hired for that and for that, it might take a while. It seems like it might take a while for the rest of the game and like the complete game to be fully developed. So, you know, but if that game is fun and the ecosystem is growing, then just farming in the alpha version, you know, it should be a fun task to keep people busy. But I would like to see more development um, or at least, yeah, more development on that on the long-term completed version of the game. Um, that's about it. Um, you know, um, this game looks really fun and I don't know if I'm going to put the 2000 in to become a, uh, to try to get that early access, but I definitely am going to be following this game and the team to hop in when I can. All right. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.